we're going to, without further ado, get into some critiquing here. Yeah. And I'm going to focus, because we've been talking about composition, I'm going to focus my critiques on composition. Um, I love this. This is great. Yeah. This uh, is... A, this is yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, this is from uh, Lucian, The Pink House, Scotland. Nice. I, boy, I've probably have driven by that, but I don't remember seeing that. That's a very Scottish sky scene. <laughs> very kind of cloudy. But what's really great about this, it's a big punctuation point. You know, Bob Holmes talks about that. It's a punctuation point. Your eye goes immediately to this house. Otherwise, imagine taking it out. Just remove it. There's nothing there. There's some interesting flowing lines, but your eye needs, our eyes need a point of interest. And that's what you've got. What's really cool about this is the sun is hitting right on there. Now you may have done some work in post. If you did, you did a really good job. I'm thinking not because I do f see those highlights around it, but overall, well done. Only thing I, here's the only thing I would probably recommend, just do it or not. In Lightroom, you've got the ability to mask the sky. I probably mask the sky and make it a little darker even, just to bring it a even a little more contrast. That's my only point. You've got leading lines, you know, you've got a kind of interesting S curve. If you see it, you can see there's an S curve leading on the water up to leads your eye up to the house. And you know, it's interesting. We talk about mood lines in my composition course. Mood lines are lines that show emotion. And this mood line of the mountains going like that is an uplifting mood line that actually says optimism. Yeah, right there. So it goes along with the with the fact that the house is uplifting because it's lit, literally. It's the tonality of it is brighter, which also gives you an emotion. So well done, excellent. All right. Remind me again whose this is. Uh, that was Lucian. Lucian, well done, Lucian. The All Guggenheim. right. And, yep, this one is uh, from our friend Christopher Carpenter. Um, this one is Solitude at the uh, Guggenheim. Yeah, you've done a really good job. You framed your subject in a silhouette right within the pillar. You don't have the pillar bumping into the guy's head. You've done a great job. You probably moved around until you went. Okay, there it is. White background of the pillar silhouettes the, the subject. He is the focal point. Uh, you know, who can argue with the lines of the Guggenheim designed by Frank Lloyd Wright, my favorite architect of all time. Um, I grew up in a house that was designed by one of his students. And so I appreciate his architecture. You know, he does something interesting. I'm going to talk about his architecture, which it, it has a lot to do with what you see here. So Frank Lloyd Wright was a genius, and you can learn a lot from his architecture. As a matter of fact, there are photographers who studied him and use that in their photography. So one of the things Frank Lloyd Wright that did and does, that did, if you notice the entryway is very small. Yeah, that's not a big entryway. So you see how it's kind of like pretty narrow? doesn't seem like it's very high. He did that because once you walk through that door, you come into a very expansive space. And the contrast is what Frank Lloyd Wright was using there. So he did that. He made it so there's these narrow openings. But when you stepped inside, all of a sudden it's very expansive. So that's, to me, that's communicated in this photograph. Um, and, you know, I love everything about this. I love the lines that, you know, 
but the main thing that really makes this work, take the subject out, it's kind of a postcard, right? But put the subject in there, now it tells a story. So excellent, well done, bravo. Um, Jeremy just asked, how do I send my photo for critique? Uh, join the AYP club. There is a link in the description. Uh, and submit your photo there, and I will bring it up. So that is how you do that. Uh, the AYP it. club on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, our next photo is from friend of the show, Amir. I saw uh, this This one. was taken... Yeah, this was taken in Tel Aviv. Wow. Another great photograph. It's, it's amusing. It's got a story. You've got frames within frames. You know, the... The cute girl, the guy cannot help but look at her. Yeah. He's got a phone in his hand. His leg. Look at the look at the timing you got. All their feet are up. You know, they're moving forward. You get the feeling of motion. That's something Bob Holmes said. Get try to get separation in their legs, but also, you know, when you like they're all flat footed, it doesn't look like they're moving. The hair, her hair is kind of blowing by. You got the guy, you got all this motion right to left because we've got the lines in the uh, her space where she's walking, which is interesting because she's in her own space there on the on the uh, on the ground. You know, it's got its own little walkway kind of thing. There's many things about this that work really well. The guy on the bicycle, the car going the other way, a strong feeling of motion. And, you know, motion and emotion, just think about it. What is the emotion? It's an E added to motion. So when you bring motion into a photograph, you're also bringing emotion into it. Isn't that interesting? You can, there's a lot of ways that you can show emotion. You can show people running away from something that's like fear. You can show, in this case, kind of humor and beauty, which is an emotion, you know, it is kind of funny what he's doing there. And, you know, you get this feeling of, of stuff happening. And Tel Aviv is, is, I'm sure, I haven't been there, but I'm sure it's a very busy, vibrant city. So you've told a story, which is what a great photograph is all about. Excellent. Well done. You guys are doing great. I love this stuff. Let's all right. Um, this is an interesting one. Uh, so this was Whoa. submitted by Ed Barr. I'm interested in your thoughts about the rules, in quotes, of composition. I personally love this image, but would imagine photo competition judges would mark it down because it's, quote unquote, unbalanced. What is no. your take? This is a street image, so guiding a model for composition wasn't an option when this was made. Also, he said, P.S., sorry for the watermark. I normally would submit a clean image. For something like this but i saw your reviews upcoming we don't mind we're yeah, we're fine, fine with people putting watermarks on your images because we want to make sure that you're getting credit for your images so don't feel bad about that anyways okay and who is this from uh ed bar ed bar okay ed so i got a pop quiz for everybody how many rules do i write about in my book and in my courses <laughs> How many rules have I written about? Tell me all the rules. Tell me your number. What do you think? Five rules? How many rules have I given you? Five? Have I given you 83? 10? 12? What's, what do you guys think? First person to answer this is going to get a... You're going to get something special here. <laughs> First person. How many rules did Mark write about in his books? All the rules that I've gathered from over the years. So while you guys are answering that, come on, one brave soul, put the number in there. Well, how many rules do you think? I love the textures that you've got here. You've got, uh, you know, this guy, Sue, you are the winner, <laughs> okay? Mark Silver writes about zero rules because there are no rules of composition. There are no rules, zero rules. Composition, is about really what tells your story. Now, are there rules to cooking? I mean, 
you know, don't burn the butter, I, I suppose. Uh, but it's any art form, really, there are no rules to it. There are guidelines. There's things that can maybe help you tell the story. Well, now, Sue's got it right. There are no rules for Mark Silver. The quote rule of thirds, I dispel that. It's, it's throw it away. See, there's so many great photographs that defy this quote rule. Subjects are placed right in the center. Uh, subjects are placed like this one, way over on the edge of the frame. It's, it's not about that. It's about how does this composition work? Well, there's just the excitement of this guy breathing out the fumes and they're on fire. It just kind of blows my mind how you can do that. His uh, tats, you know, the flames coming out. And what's all this stuff coming, these little dots? I don't even know what that is. I but think it's it from the, maybe the liquid that he has. The gas I think or it's something. Like, yeah, that's what I think it is. I mean, that's really interesting. It's a very interesting photograph. Don't worry about, by the way, don't worry about photo competitions. They don't get it right. I'm sorry. It's not a standard to judge anything by, you know. Um, I find them often annoying, personally. But... The thing is, you know, you could take some of the great photographers of the world, anonymously submit their work, and they, you probably wouldn't have a winning photograph. I, I, I'm really kind of skeptical about them. But um, your, your photograph tells a story. It's the fuel. Thanks, Ed. And there are, Ed, I'm sorry to say, there are no three rules that I've ever given. So... I hope I've dispelled that. There are no three rules. There's only guidelines. And guidelines are just exactly what they say. They're guides. You can change them if, at will. Some of them work. You know, Bob Holmes said, yeah, this rule of thirds can work, but it becomes very flat because everybody else is using the same rule, quote rule. You know, if everybody does this photograph the same way and then one person bends the rules, guess which one is going to really pop? Chris Burkhart made that point. He's standing on a cliff and there's like 12 surf photographers or 20 and they're all using the same angle, same lens. Guess who gets the cover shot? Because he steps away. Maybe he goes forward with a wider lens, wider angle lens. He does something completely different. He's the one that gets the photograph on the cover. The other 20 photographers don't because they're all doing the same thing. This is a good lesson in life. Break away from the crowd. Okay, Ed, excellent. Yeah, this photo is beautiful and it conveys a lot of emotion also. Mm -hmm. Good job. It makes me almost of a uh, album cover. I know. Yeah, you could put that, there's space. Yeah, you've got a lot of space over there for text, which is another helpful thing okay jimmy good we're gonna get you in there jared will get you in right jared yep i accepted one person and i'm keeping an eye to okay. make sure so you guys should definitely else, be part of the ayp club we're really i'm really happy and thrilled to see this is an extension of the ayp club by the way when i do critiquing um, it's in the name of the ayp club that's why you have to be a member of it so um you guys can come and help each other. That's the point of that club. The purpose is to help you advance your photography. Hence, and advancing your photography. You just get so inspired. Look at all yeah. these photos that people submit. Uh, and we can't show all of them. If we did, it would take us days to go through all the photos that everybody does. So um, join, get inspired, get feedback from other people. It's awesome. Yeah, so the most valuable thing that I found in art school was the critiquing. Uh, I didn't always enjoy it, but it was valuable because you need feedback from other people. And it's a big component, actually, of, of teaching a subject or learning a subject is getting critiqued, hopefully correctly. But you need to be able to also withstand incorrect stuff because that's the world around us. People are going to throw you curveballs and 
neg negativity, you got to be able to stand up to it. Please subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows. Like the video and please share it and leave your comments. I love hearing from you. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.